This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create these simple uh, motion letter logos using Inkscape. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Inkscape here to get started. Uh, what I'm going to do first is just set up our document. So I'll go to File, Document Properties, and we're going to want to make sure we have the display unit set to pixels. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of the page border and then close out of that. And up here where it says Enable Snapping, we want that turned on and we want Snap to Cusp Nodes, we want that turned on, and Snap to Smooth Nodes, we want that turned on as well. If you don't know which one is which, just hover your cursor over it and a little tag will come up telling you which one that is. So we want those two turned on. Then we'll go to View. We're going to want Custom Selected. We'll zoom in at one-to-one. -one. And we'll open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button right here. We're going to want Last Selected chosen from that drop-down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a letter. I'm just going to generate a letter that I like to use. Uh, if you noticed in the, uh, the opening of the video, I used the letter K as an example. So I'm going to grab the Text tool and click on the canvas to, to create a, a blinking cursor there. And I'm just going to use the letter K. You can use whatever letter or number you'd like. You could even do this with, with uh, icons and logos. As long as it's vector-based, you should be good. Uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, Select tool. And I'm going to go up here to the text editor. Let me grab that from my other window. There we go. And the font I'm going to use for this, uh, you could use whatever font you'd like. I'm just going to use Leto, Leto Heavy Black. And close out of that. And I'm just going to hold Control and Shift and click and drag one of those arrows to scale that up like that. And then I'm going to convert this from a, from a text object to an actual path. So I'll go to Path, Object to Path. And then I'll ungroup. I'll click the button up here that says ungroup. I should make sure I got that. Um, I'm going to take the opacity and bring that down roughly in half. That's pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the rectangles tool. I'm just going to click and drag to create a rectangle like that. Maybe about that size in comparison with uh, the letter right here. And I'm going to take this node up here to the top right, this little round node, and just click and drag that all the way down so that it has rounded edges like that. If it already has rounded edges when you started it, just go ahead and click this corner icon up here that says Make Corner Sharp, and then do it again like that. And once that's done, we can, can convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. Grab this Select tool, and I'm going to grab the object up here in the top right corner. If you go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, you'll notice there's a little node right there at the top right corner. I'm going to grab the Select tool. I'm going to grab the object near that node and just snap that node to the top left corner of the letter K right here. Let me zoom in on that a little bit so you can see it better. I'm going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel a couple of times to zoom in and out. And when you're zoomed in, you can move the page around by pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. So now that I've done that, uh, I'm going to go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. I'm just going to click and drag over those three nodes right there and just hold control and bring those over to the right like that. Let me go back to the Select tool. I'm going to duplicate this object by hitting Control D. And I'm going to make that green. And I'm going to snap this one right beneath there at the bottom of the other one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another one of these objects. I'm going to take this black one, hit Control D to duplicate it, and snap this one down here. And I'll grab the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, take these three nodes, and I'm just going to hold Control and bring this to the right like that. Let me grab this Select tool. I'm going to duplicate that again by hitting Control D. Hold Control, move this one out here like that. Take the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, select those three nodes, and just hold Control and bring that out a little bit like that. So you, as you can see, we're starting to get the, uh, the, uh, the motion lines here. And grab the Select tool again. I'm going to make another copy of this green object. Again, Control D, snap it down here at the bottom. Maybe I'll bring this one into the right a little more, but I'm just going to make sure I'm holding control while I slide that to the right so that it locks onto the horizontal axis. And I'm going to create another one. So Control-D to duplicate, put this one down here. And maybe I'll make this one go to, edit paths, go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, select those three nodes. Maybe I'll bring this one out to here like that. Go back to the Select tool, grab another green one, snap it onto the bottom there, and we'll create one more one more uh, black line of motion right there. So I'm going to hit Control d to duplicate that, snap this one down here. Don't worry about this being, don't worry about the height of these objects being higher than the layer. We're going to correct that in just a minute. So uh, once we've done that, 
and grab the edit paths by nodes tool, take those nodes. I'm just going to bring these in a little bit to the right. And again, make sure you hold control when you're doing this so that it locks it onto that axis. Otherwise, it's like going up and down like that. And we don't want that. So I'm going to do that. Grab the select tool. I'm going to duplicate this object by hitting control D. And I'm going to bring this one out here like that to the left. Again, while holding control, go to the edit paths by nodes tool. I'm just going to take these nodes and bring these in. Oops, no, we don't want that. Let me hit control Z to undo that. Something like that's pretty good. Go back to the select tool, take this object, hit control D to duplicate that and bring this out here like that. Maybe bring that a little further. Let me zoom in. There we go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click and drag over all of those objects we just created so that we have them all selected. And I'm gonna group them together with the group selected objects button up here. And I'm gonna click on this letter and I'm gonna copy the height. I'm actually just gonna right click the object and go to copy. And then I'm gonna turn on this lock icon right here where it says when locked, change both the width and the height by the same proportion, we're gonna lock that. And once we have that copied, I'm gonna click on these groupings of objects right here and go to edit, paste size, paste height, just like that. Now I'm gonna click and drag over both of those objects right there. And in the align menu, I'm gonna click the button that says align top edges, just like that. And now we can click off it to deselect everything. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna zoom in on this again. I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna move this object into the, to the right here so that there's no white space, there's no white gap between those objects. If you notice what I just had, you notice all those white gaps in there? That's what we don't want. So we wanna move this in until there's no more white gaps like that. And then we can ungroup that with the ungroup selected objects button. Click off of it to deselect everything. And now I'm gonna click on just the letter and then I'm gonna hold shift and click on the other black objects that we created. Not the green ones, just the black ones. We want all of them selected. We'll go to path, union. And now I'm gonna click on the green object and hold shift and click the other green objects like that so we have them all selected and go to path, union, then hold shift, click on the letter K and go to path, difference. And what I'm gonna do now is just press one of the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. You could bring the opacity of this all the way back up and you can make this whatever color you'd like. Uh, I'm gonna hold control and shift just to scale this down a little bit. I'm gonna click on this a second time so we get our rotation handles. Uh, our, actually our rotation and our shearing handles because I'm going to take this shearing handle here in the middle on the middle right hand side and just slide that up a little bit just to give that an upward sort of motion like that. And once you've done that, you're pretty much done. That's how you can go about creating these simple um, motion sort of uh, letter logos using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.